this week's video we're going to do something I've been looking forward to doing for quite a while and that is we're installing all of this stuff into the Airstream but first let's run that introduction footage and we'll talk more about this on the other side Alright, so one of the things that I've been looking forward to doing with this Airstream is increasing the capabilities for us to go boondocking and to stay off grid longer without having to give up so much. When we first bought the Airstream, we added solar panels to the roof of the Airstream and we increased the battery capacity by going to two 6 volt AGM batteries. And that's worked pretty well. I would say this is a, an entry level solar setup. It, great for overnight. Um, you can do multiple nights of boondocking provided you have good sunny um, days. But we also found that when you get into some increment weather with cloudy days and such, you quickly outrun the capacity of these batteries. And we've also wanted to do more. I mean, we're limited to four outlets inside the trailer with our thousand watt inverter and it would be nice to be able to do more we want to be able to you know run the microwave run the refrigerator on electricity while we're towing down the road versus running it on propane so what are we doing so we're staying with the existing solar that we have we are adding a victron 2000 watt inverter and this is a hybrid pass-through inverter so basically the full power coming into the airstream goes through this inverter and back into the into the fuse panel. What that allows us to do is, because it's a hybrid inverter, if I'm plugged into 20 amp service and I need 30 amp service to run the AC, I can pull the other 15 amps or the other 10 amps off of the batteries and make up that difference. So it's a hybrid. I, we're adding a battery monitor, a Victron battery monitor. This allows us to get more detail into our battery condition so we know exactly how much power we have in the battery so we can monitor that at a much closer level to make sure that we stay within what the capacity of our batteries are. We are adding two 100 amp hour lithium batteries. Now this will essentially double the battery capacity that I have now. Lithium batteries, you can essentially take them down to zero. They have a battery management system built into these and it will not allow you to take the battery down to a point where you're gonna damage them. So I've got double the battery capacity here. I've got 200 amp hours. Everything's going inside the Airstream. The batteries are gonna go inside the Airstream. That's one of the nice things about the lithiums is they don't need to be vented. So they can be stored inside. In fact, it's preferable to store them inside because you wanna keep these temperature controlled as much as possible. They do not like to get too hot. They do not like to get too cold. The battery management system will shut off charging at 125 degrees or at 24 degrees. And basically that's to protect the batteries. You can continue to discharge the batteries to a lower temperature, but it will stop taking a charge at that point. So we've got a lot of work here to do. First thing we've got to do is we've got to take out the existing inverter and we've got to pull out the batteries. Now this is not by any means a how-to video on how to do these modifications. I'm going to show you the, what I'm doing along the way, but I'm not going to try to give you a step-by-step -step instructions. In fact, if you're not comfortable working with electricity, I highly suggest you hire a professional to do this. You'd be money well spent. I bought all this through Battleborn and they gave me a very good deal. They did not sponsor this video. I paid their asking prices for all of this stuff, but they were able to discount a package for me. Hopefully I have everything I need to do this. We will start the process now. All right, so this is the location of the batteries. It's at mounted, they're mounted in the tongue of the trailer. They're in this battery box, which will now become a storage box for the future. Um, I'm going to disconnect everything and pull these guys out. So you can see we have 
two sets of leads coming in to the batteries. One is for the tra trailer power, one is for the inverter. We're going to disconnect all that and because they're six volt there's a jumper lead between the two. So let's get going. And just like that, the batteries are out. Now the system is uh, isolated. There's no power. There's not. We're not plugged in. We have no battery hookup, so we're safe to take apart things on the inside. So this is the lounge area. I've taken all the cushions off. I've taken the cover off of this area. Here's the hot water heater. This is where I'm talking about putting a partition here to isolate the um, battery storage and inverter from the hot water heater. I'm going to start by just taking it, unscrewing it, taking it off the wall, and then I will see what needs to be done to disconnect things from it once I can get a little better look at it. So let's get at it. Cue the time lapse. The inverter's all out, and now we can take a look at this and see about test fitting the other items that are out on the table and see how they're going to fit in here. So now I've got everything just kind of set in here where it's going to go. And you know, I've got plenty of room to make everything fit. I have pretty much enough space here to add a, a third battery in the future, but currently the subwoofer is going to sit in that position. So I would have to relocate the subwoofer to add another battery, which is not a big deal. I probably can do that quite easily. So it looks like everything's going to work pretty well. Um, I am going to have to make some brackets for the inverter. The inverter is really designed to install um, horizontally, but I'm putting it on a vertical um, direction. And also because the wall here is slightly curved, it's going to um, not fit as tight as I would like. So what I want to do, and I also need to get it up off the floor a little bit because there's some wires that's going to run underneath there. So what I'm going to do to make that fit better is I'm going to build some little um, U-shaped brackets to mount on the floor and have the inverter set up on that and lift it up oh probably inch and a half or so and that should be enough. The batteries look pretty good. I've got to come up with a way to secure them in here so they don't move. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim them with some pieces of wood to kind of build like a little bit of a box around them. Some small strips of wood to screw them into the floor and then put a strap over them and hold them in that way. The one thing I need to do, and I'll move the camera so you can see, is the charge controller for the solar system is mounted up right here on this wall. And that's right into where the batteries are sitting. It's a little too close. So I'm going to move that over and up a little bit so it clears the batteries. And that should work pretty well for that. Other than that, everything looks pretty good. The other thing we need to do um, is I'm probably going to have to take out all of this lounge area because it's really the only way to get at the wiring which is behind this panel here is to remove this section of the lounge. So I'm probably going to move, remove that next. Now allow me to get in here a little bit more and work on the, um, this, the wiring a little easier because I've got to move the wiring from the tongue of the trailer 
back here is for the air stream power. And then I've got to run in new wires to the inverter and everything. And i, I got to put the shunt in for the battery monitor and the fuse in here too. So got a few pieces to put in here to make this all work. We'll get going on that next. Well, today's the next day and kind of bring up the data and where we're at. So you can see we've pretty much tore apart all of this and we've gotten a lot of things set and ready to be reassembled. So all the original wiring has been removed. I don't know if you can see behind me, I had to take the whole front lounge out because this is pretty much the only way you can get at this wiring hub right here. This is where all your wiring comes in from the uh, DC, from the batteries. And so I had to get at this, I've removed all the wiring that goes out to the battery box in the front of the trailer. And I've rerouted the wiring for to the batteries to come in here where the batteries will now reside. Um, I also ran cable here to the fuse box in the in the middle of the trailer and this will be for the shore power to come into the inverter and then pass through and back to the fuse box. I've made a couple of brackets here and this is what the inverter is going to sit on and the inverter will mount right there on that wall pretty much where the old one was but it is a little bit larger it takes up quite a bit more space and then I've built this partition which will fit in here and it will separate the hot water heater from the inverter and batteries mostly just to keep the temperature more consistent and it also gives me a place to mount a few things on that if I need so today the game plan is to start putting things back together um, should be pretty straightforward there's gonna be you know there's gonna be wiring it and connecting everything up and mounting all the everything in place including the batteries and Make sure there's something to secure it, reassembling the front lounge and everything like that, wiring the batteries in place and everything. So that's what we're going to work on, start putting things back together, and we'll give you an update in a little bit. So just a quick update, we've got the batteries temporarily hooked up, just double checking all my wiring to make sure everything's working correctly and it does seem to be in good shape. We've got everything plugged in, the exhaust fans are running, you can hear them in the background. I also checked the wiring to the front uh, jack and that seems to be hooked up and working so we're in good shape. So that's one test down. The inverter is also mounted to the wall and essentially pre-wired for the most part. There's probably a couple things that still need to be done, but I'm going to wait until I get everything built back around here. I also have to now do wire in the um, connection into the fuse panel so that we can pick up the short power going to the inverter and then back into the fuse box. So that's next. We'll work on that a little bit. Um, but in the meantime, I thought I'd uh, just do a kind of a midpoint update. This is the electrical panel, and this is the back side of it, and right here is a transfer switch. This Airstream is equipped with generator prep, and so that gives you two shore power inputs, one on the side of the Airstream and one on the front of the Airstream where you'd plug in a generator. So this transfer switch switches back and forth automatically between those two inputs. Now what I did for 
this setup, or pop this cover off, and the electrical is all shut down at this point, so it is safe to open it up. I added these two wires here. One is an output where I basically tapped into the transfer switch where it goes into the electrical panel and brought that power out to the inverter. The second line is the inverter coming in where I tapped into the power that goes into the electrical panel. So basically the power comes in from the shore power line. It goes through the transfer switch then it gets switched out to the inverter and then the inverter brings it back in to the electrical panel. This allows the inverter to supply all electricity coming into the electrical panel even if the trailer is not plugged into shore power. Uh, so it was actually pretty lucky that we had this box on here because I would probably have to have added some type of electrical box back here to make all this work but having this here made a simple setup. So one other change that needed to be done was to disconnect the converter from the 120 power supply. So this 20 amp breaker right here controls the inverter and I probably could have just simply switched it off but then you would always run the risk of someone turning it back on. So I went into the fuse panel and disconnected the power lead, the hot lead off of this that goes down into the converter. That way you don't have a situation where your inverter is supplying power to your converter which is going back and supplying power to your batteries which your inverter is using. You'd end up with a loop. So Alright, so we finished the install. Everything fit nicely inside this cabinet area and let me walk you through what we have here. I'm going to start with the inverter. It's a Victron 2000 watt inverter. It is a pass-through inverter so all the power comes in from the shore power directly through the inverter and goes from the inverter to the electrical panel. So all the outlets and everything run off of this inverter. Down here we have two Battleborn lithium batteries. This gives us 200 watts of battery capacity. They flow into a shunt which is connected to a battery monitor. And on the positive side we go through a fuse, slow burn fuse, that protects the whole system. Also mounted up here is a Bluetooth adapter for the inverter so that the inverter can be monitored through a handheld device like your um, cell phone and such. We also added this wall here to separate the hot water heater from the battery compartment or the electrical part compartment. You can see here we moved the charge controller over a little bit giving a little bit more room for the batteries and you can also see that here where the subwoofer sits it's actually enough room to install one more battery so we do have room to grow on the wall we have our Victron battery monitor this monitor is all condition of the batteries it's currently showing the total battery voltage at 13.46 and it says that our batteries are at 100%. This is a ZAMP solar charger. It shows that we're pulling in 8.5 amps. 
from just the three rooftop panels. So you can see with the top cover on this compartment back in place, I still have access to the inverter, which allows me to turn it on and off. And over here I have access to see the solar charge controller. So this works out pretty nice. This was, this was a cover that was put in here by Airstream, so almost like they thought about this. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video of our install of two lithium ion batteries from Battleborn and our Victron 200 watt inverter. I think this setup is really going to help us be able to go out and find those boondocking spots and be able to stay out for a week at a time without having to worry about battery life or uh, you know other hookups. And, and it will work too when we get into campgrounds that have not as much electricity when we're plugged in and we need a little bit of a boost to make sure we don't keep throwing off that circuit breaker at the campground pedestal. If you did enjoy this video, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps with the YouTube analytics. And leave us a comment if you have any question about anything we did in this video, any of the equipment we installed or the tools we used. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you follow along in the journey. Hit the notification button so you know when we post new videos. We post new videos on a weekly basis. And we'd like to make sure that you don't miss out. So be sure to hit that notification bell. Until the next time, everyone stay safe. And we will see you all down the road.